Hello again. The next section is going to cover coatings uh, that are applied in particular to metal uh, medical devices. So we have different types of coatings. They might be hydrophilic, hydrophobic, uh, they might be antibacterial, antithrombogenic. Uh, they might be used for the drug releasing capacity or for tissue interaction. Uh, so I'm going to go through these uh, uh, piece by piece in the next few slides. So hydrophilic coatings are coatings that exhibit a water living loving characteristic. They participate in dynamic hydrogen bonding with surrounding waters. Um, and therefore they exhibit extremely low coefficients of friction, which is their main application. So providing what's called a very lubricious layer, um, something that will be very easy to insert in and out of the body. So um, they're often used in catheters and guide wires, um, intraocular lenses, cartridges um, for, for um, storing interlocal lenses and glucose sensors, um, and any other device where you want ease of access, so you want a very low coefficient of friction. Um, and there's also the huge potential to reduce thrombosis and prevent protein absorption. So proteins don't like hydrophilic surfaces. Um, so by preventing protein absorbed, and you will prevent blood clotting um, and therefore thrombosis at the site of a implant. So uh, an application here is in uh, vascular grafts, heart valves, anything that is blood contacting. Hydrophilic surfaces are preferred. And the, the types of um, surfaces uh, of hydrophilic coatings, they are a polymer base, so PVP, polyurethanes, polyacrylic acids, polyethylene oxide and polysaccharides are uh, most commonly used to coat uh, the surface of a, an implant or, or, or any other me medical device. So hydrophobic then are obviously water hating and these act as a barrier against water. Um, however, they can be as lubricious. So lubricious meaning have a, have a good um, low coefficient of friction um, as dry hydrophilic coatings. So they are uh, lubricious. Again, they can be easily inserted. Uh, they're more durable than hydrophilic coatings, so they might be used sometimes for durability. Um, PTFE is one a very common example. And uh, where they have found good use is in things like electrosurgery devices, pacemaker leads, and um, and um, stents, catheters, and drug eluting polymers. So uh, something in electrosurgery, you want to provide a barrier to water, pacemaker leads likewise, um, and they can be used um, for a durable finish in stents, catheters, and for a drug eluting capacity. So examples are Paraline, uh, PTFE, which I mentioned, which um, Teflon is a trade name of PTFE and polycaprolactone. Um, and then we have the drug releasing coatings. So uh, we've mentioned these, they can often be hydrophobic. They're a polymeric coating on a drug eluting stent, that's one example, uh, to give site specific delivery of anti restinotic drugs. Um, they can also, drug releasing coatings can be applied to um, angioplasty balloons, um, they could be applied to prostheses, uh, they could be applied to. Um, to patches, intradermal patches. Um, so anything where you want uh, the drug to be released in a controlled manner. Um, they're also used in intrauterine devices and intravaginal rings. They're typically durable polymers. So silicones, ethylene vinyl acetates, polyurethanes, uh, polymethyl methacrylate and polyvinyl alcohol. So durable polymers. Um, and there are examples of biodegradable polymers which are very useful for drug releasing. So polyethylene glycon or PEG is, is a very common example. Polyglycolides, PGA and polyanhydrides, which give uh, PGA gives a very fast release and polyethylene glycon a fast to medium term release of drugs. So how do we get these coatings to bond, these hydrophilic, hydrophobic uh, coatings to, to, to bond? So hydrophilic coatings um, can bond through covalent or non-covalent uh, binding to plastics, uh, depending on the coating reagents. 
uh, if the polymer has no functional groups, as is the case with polyethylene and polypropylene, then plasma or coronal treatments may be used. So these are a physical uh, deposition treatment. Um, and here you temporarily functionalize the surface to get the coatings to adhere. Typical coating methods are dip coating. So you actually lower the device into a liquid coating solution and withdraw it at a known speed. This could be repeated a number a new number of times. Uh, and once the ideal operating parameters have been established, then you have a valid dip coating process. Um, spray coating then, it's similar to airbrushing where a nebulized mist is sprayed over the surface. And film coating is where a roll is drawn from reel to reel through a tank of coating solution and a curing area. So that's how you get the coating onto the, the, the metal device. Um, and then it needs to be cured. And the two major methods for curing hydrophilic coatings are heat and ultraviolet light. So with heating, coated items are controlled um, by heating in an oven. This accelerates drying of the solvent and any necessary chemical reactions that take place um, and cross-linking will happen. Uh, in a UV cured system, the coated items are exposed to UV light, which stimulates the necessary chemical reactions for curing, but it has no effect on solvent evaporation. Um, so sometimes these materials can be toxic um, unless the, the solvent is evaporated in a separate step. So they were the hydrophilic uh, methods. So the hydrophobic coatings then are often applied by chemical vapor de deposition as opposed to the, the physical methods in um, hydrophilic. Um, so here an initiator and a monomer, so the, the coating monomer are vaporized and they're introduced into a vacuum chamber containing the material to be coated. So we have the material to be coated in here um, the source materials are vaporized with a carrier gas um, and, uh, and they go into a vacuum chamber where they have nothing to stick to except the substrate. Uh, so you can get coatings of great uniform thickness um, even over complex shapes using this method. Um, so that's all I'm going to talk about in hydrophilic and hydrophobic coatings. Um, it, just to give you a sense of the types of coatings, why they're used, and what types of methods are used to actually coat devices. Thank you.